Hello, welcome to another toneless landscape oil painting demonstration with your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and welcome as well to day 10 of the Past Masters series, volume 2. Um, oh, you saw my Mr. Happy Cup. I have a Mr. Happy Cup in the studio because I'm such a happy fellow. Um, so, the painting I have done the study after today is uh, Charles Appel. And uh, I don't know the title of his piece. It's just called Landscape, as best as I can reckon. I did try again to find some more information about uh, good old Chuck. Um, yeah, is it really you see uh, auction stuff like Christie's, you see um, some stuff from a few museums where he might have some work, um, but biographical information is scant. I will read you the one thing I found. This is off Artnet, and basically it just says uh, he was a member of the Sal Magundi Club, which I think was a painting club in 1906. And he studied at the New York School of Art in New York City with Francis Lewis Mora and William Merritt Chase, and at the Art Students League with Frank Vincent Dumond. He was also, I have read somewhere, a student of George Aness. You can certainly see uh, an influence of Aness in his work. Um, what I love about um, Chuck's work is the his color uh, sense is just really, really great. I like the way he plays um, complementaries off each other, but they're not direct complementaries. So, I mean, if you put a, um, a bright orange up against a bright blue, everybody's gasping, you know, but if you mute, you mute those tones and find some sort of middle ground, um, it can be extremely effective. But if you look at the skies in any of the uh, studies of his work I've done, um, which, I mean, all you would need to do is uh, go to my channel and in the search uh, type in Uphel. We might be getting to the point, too, where I've done enough of these that I may create a playlist. Uh, let me make a note about that. This might be the one to, to push us over playlist. Because I, I, like, I like Charles Appel. Um, I, I can kind of see why he's not uh, regarded as highly as a, a George Ness or a um, Charles Warren Eaton or even a John Francis Murphy. Although scant information about um, John Murphy out there as well. More than uh, Charles Appel, but still not vast amounts. And... Um, he has some things he like the composition of this particular painting I have to say if you look at his original I've actually strengthened his composition a bit I think his was a little yeah, not, I mean you can see I made the trees a little bigger in proportion to the picture plane and a few other things but um, I still love his work a lot and uh, when I look at it uh, the reason I go after it is like look at all the different patches of color I've placed in the sky that's that's why I like doing and now I'm getting into some of the roses and things you know that's why I like going after Charles Appel's work I think it's uh, just an amazing um, sunsets amazing colors and a glowing quality that I really admire and um, I have to say this uh, study after Appel is one of the favorite studies I've done of, of anyone. I, it really came out looking nice and um, I, I think one of the reasons for actually a lot of these studies, this whole uh, series has really been pretty good looking stuff and um, I chalk it up to two things. One is working with a bigger um, size, like this is probably a 7 by 10 and um, so it's twice as big as a five by seven. Uh, also, uh, the I have this uh, my texture. The one thing that I managed to really, really nail um, in the last uh, six, seven months was the textured surface that I'm doing my paintings on. And this stuff, uh, all of these uh, past masters, were the first uh, paintings I did after arriving at 
my current uh, textured board approach and uh, great surface to work on it really supports me um, it gives me a lot of tooth and a lot of interest uh, the only downside to it is that it takes a lot longer to prepare the boards uh, this way than um, with my more automatic sort of approaches I used in the past but um, you know it's an investment in time that I think pays big dividends and uh, um, so I, I like I say I think um, well geez I have a uh, we're only 10 I have a box of boards all prepped and labeled for the next 30 maybe 35 uh, past masters so I did a couple last week and I'm gonna try and get a couple in each week and I'm doing quite a lot of juggling now because um, I'm trying to get my own stuff done as well it's not like I can just stake out time to do nothing but past masters since I haven't really got a market for these out here um, in New Zealand uh, but uh, recently that may be changing. I was talking to a, a gentleman that uh, might uh, give me some representation for these studies and that would be great because I put as much effort into one of these as I do into uh, my own work, but uh, they tend to sit in a box and um, you know, I, I have it. I, I, I guess actually, I mean the one I had a show back in 2014 where I had done the uh, 100 days of tonalism and uh, this was prior to the videos actually going out and uh, I have to say that um, that uh, I sold quite a few uh, studies from that show and just fixing something on my computer here sorry about that sorry for the pause anyway um How's it going in the studio? Well, big cleanup. Oh my goodness. Uh, I just I have such a small studio and it's full of frames, it's full of paintings. Uh, it was still full of paintings from the last show that I uh, just recently took down and all the frames are still there as well. And um, so, but I wanted to kind of keep things there because I've got the, uh, the uh, the lady that uh, hung the show um, did such a great job. I'm having her do the hanging in my uh, the gallery area of my studio, and um, so she got started with a selection uh, last week, and uh, I popped those uh, in frames and stuff, and uh, that'll be going up Monday, and um, I've already got a bunch of frames set to come home. Uh, I have a spot in my garage where I can store things. It's a bit of a drag though because it's really kind of humid and, and wet here in New Zealand and uh, my garage, I can't store artwork down there. It starts growing mold. Um, even some of the frames will start to grow mold. Um, so far I've been able to clean it off but a uh, bit of a bit of a problem. I Anyway, um, other than that, I did do a few little paintings. Like I said, I did a, uh, a couple master studies last week. I got into one figurative piece. Um, I'm intending to do maybe one figurative piece every week if I can. Um, I, I will say I had a lot of great sales in my um, little gallery and in uh, actually some of the galleries that represent me last week it was a good week which is awesome considering we're nowhere even close to the tourist season right now so um, I'm really um, encouraged by that and it's been you know it's been a long uh, it's been a long time to get to a point where I'm getting more consistent sales and uh, you know it's a combination of things one is you have to uh, <sighs> I don't know. Well, for one, the work has risen to a level that it's hard to ignore the quality for people that are of a mind to buy the type of thing I do. That's probably the biggest factor. And number two, I've got some pretty good galleries on board now. And number three, it's just uh, uh, been pretty good in my little um, studio gallery as well. So I'm just hoping it continues and because you know really I'm not a commercial artist I am all about creating the work and um, and I'm about sharing and teaching and at least teaching the way I teach <laughs> which isn't very remedial and which uh, I, I should uh, take a, a minute now to thank all of you that are 
um, new subscribers and the, especially the old subscribers. I mean, you are my uh, tribe. You're the people that uh, that understand and get what I do. And um, it's not the largest chunk of the uh, the artists uh, here on YouTube, uh, but I like to think that the uh, there's the quality is. Uh, what brings people to my channel and uh, I keep the quality very high. I know that if I was to make some stylistic changes I could be more popular but you really have to be true to yourself if you're gonna have um, anything but feet of clay as a, as a painter. That's my strong belief and I think it's important to just find people that like what it is that you do and assuming it's quality um, you'll just build on that and that's been my approach so Anyway, uh, that's a little update for you. I'm going to try and roll out another video here uh, coming up. Um, I got one out last week, uh, in the middle of the week, and uh, I do have some stuff to photo photograph, so we're just going to keep all these balls up in the air. And uh, if you haven't checked out my figure painting channel, there's now two paintings up there. The one I put up last week is a really strong one, one of the best I've done. So um, the link for that channel will be just under the video there so go check it out and uh, please subscribe if you like me or my work uh, there'll be some pretty uh, groovy stuff coming out there not with the sort of volume I have here but but little nuggets little nuggets anyway thanks for joining me today and I'll be back real soon with another video meanwhile please take good care and stay out of trouble <laughs>